Hello and welcome to this lecture in the course on uh, introduction to computer and network performance analysis using queuing systems. I am Professor Varsha Apte and I am faculty member in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering IIT Bombay. So, let us continue where we uh, stopped in the previous lecture. Uh, we were looking at closed queuing systems and uh, we had taken an example and done some analysis. Now we are going to generalize uh, all the uh, metrics that we calculated and we will also be looking at one interesting metric called the saturation number. So, uh, just a recall again uh, closed systems are used when you have a small number of clients uh, and uh, when whose uh, think time is also small okay? and they are in a request response loop. Uh, there is uh, the clients can represent uh, students in the lab or uh, call center agents interacting with the website or they are threads uh, in, uh, interacting with the CPU. Okay? So, <clears throat> the basic loop is that uh, a client thinks for some time then issues a request, then the request is serviced it gets a response and the response is uh, returns to the uh, user. And then again uh, the think issue request wait for response loop begins ok uh, continues. So, this is basically the loop and uh, the number of clients the think time the average service time service rate number of servers uh, these are the usual ones that are the parameters of the system and these are the new ones that are the parameters of a closed queuing system. Uh, again metrics were very similar uh, we had gone over this last time the only new one being this R cycle which basically uh, represents the entire time taken for from any point to any point. So, if you st if you start measuring from here the time taken from an, an issue uh, request being issued uh, waiting for response coming back thinking and then you know at the issue time again. So, this whole loop uh, is going to be basically response time plus think time and that is the new metric called the cycle time that is the only new thing here otherwise everything the definition is the same. Uh, and previously uh, what we did was we actually did uh, low load asymptote and high load asymptote uh, calculation for the metrics for a, a specific numerical example. Uh, all that I want to do now is to write the same things uh, symbolically. So, it is not very difficult uh, so let us do that. Remember that uh, the main trick that was used to reason about this system was uh, to draw a little slow region of a kind of a weird shape where you have something like this. You enclose the whole thing, but you draw it like this so that you have some definition of a throughput that a request is leaving from here and re-entering here. Okay, so, this is like an instantaneous exit and entry. Okay. Uh, so, that uh, the time spent in this whole transit here is a 0, uh, but you get to talk about the throughput here. So, the uh, exit rate here is going to be the throughput and this throughput is going to be nothing but the throughput of the server. So, now you have a way to talk about the throughput and uh, the, the biggest advantage you get is that inside this region, inside this region the number of clients is fixed. So, the, the number of requests is fixed, okay. there are going to be exactly um, M requests in this region uh, no matter uh, where the requests are there could be some requests here uh, and some requests here, but together they are going to be always total of M requests. Okay? Because uh, remember that the assumption is that the user gives only, only one request uh, per user at, uh, at any time right maximum one or otherwise the user may be thinking also in which case the user has not issued the request. If, uh, but once a request is issued uh, before the user gets a response the user is not going to issue another request again. This is a very important assumption and because of that assumption you know that uh, the total number of requests uh, either in think mode or in waiting for service, waiting for or in service or in service right. So, either the request is thinking or it is waiting or it is in service uh, total of this is going to be m 
and this is a very important and very clever trick uh, for us to use, right. So, given this uh, uh, let us uh, go through, so uh, for this then the uh, little slob becomes uh, essentially m is equal to lambda r plus h, right. The time here is r. the time here is h, the time the think time here is h and that is it we do not assume any other times remember that we had said that any network uh, delay is assumed to be 0. Okay. So, basically the time through this region is r plus h, the throughput through this region is uh, the, the server throughput and the total of request in this region is always fixed at m. Uh, given a, a certain number of clients uh, it is going to be uh, fixed at m. So, uh, at m equal to 1 uh, it becomes easy m equal to 1 if we are trying to reason this for low load asymptote m equal to 1 uh, this is going to be uh, 1 is equal to lambda r plus h. Uh, what is r going to be at m equal to 1? r is equal to tau, right. So, we have 1 is equal to lambda tau plus h. So, for the low load asymptote, we have an actual value for throughput, throughput is going to be 1 over tau plus h, right. So, this is kind of obvious that if there is only one uh, user in a request response loop, the rate at which a request is going to be done is 1 every think time plus response time right that is what is happening in this system 1 every think time plus response time uh, the request gets done but the response time with one user is tau so this is this is uh, kind of clear so once we have the throughput uh, in this case uh, we can uh, calculate the uh, we have the r we have the throughput we can calculate the response time sorry the the server utilization and we can calculate the number in the system. So, what is server utilization? This is uh, lambda tau. So, this is going to be equal to tau divided by tau plus h, right. So, we have server utilization. Uh, what else do we need? We can get n, n is equal to lambda r, n is the number of customers here, right, the number of customers at the server. Um, we have uh, r is equal to just tau, right. So, we have uh, tau divided by tau plus h for number of uh, customers uh, at the server also. So, uh, low load asymptote uh, for all of these uh, in, in symbolically we, we have calculated, uh, we will show a table later also to reinforce all of this. Um, the waiting time of course, when there is just one customer in the system is 0 you know there is never going to be any waiting here. So, similarly uh, queue size will also be 0, there will be never any customers uh, or any requests in the uh, queue, right. So, we have n, we have uh, q, we have r, we have w and uh, we have uh, we have server utilization and we have throughput, right. So, we have the basic metrics for the low load asymptote in, uh, in sort of symbolic sense. Now, let us write the same thing for um, m going to infinity for a large m uh, uh, symbolically again. So, this was tau let us also define mu as 1 by tau. Remember we are doing all of this for a single server ok, single server. We are not really going to be uh, doing this analysis for multiple servers. So, uh, for single server as m tends to infinity lam, uh, capital lambda the throughput is going to go to mu this much we know right. Um, and again we have the basic little slaw region applies again here ok let me draw that region again. Ok uh, and this is r and this is h. So, the basic uh, formula that m is equal to 
uh, throughput multiplied by R plus H this always applies, but we can in low loads and high loads some of these uh, symbols get some specific values in terms of the parameters. So, um, as, as m tends to infinity we have this m is equal to mu r plus h right that is one difference. We can say that this throughput now we can replace by the parameter mu. So, we can write uh, r as uh, I will take this mu down m by mu and h on this side minus h right. So, this is a very important uh, formula actually it tells us uh, about the behavior of uh, r which is that it is linear in number of clients when the number of clients is large that means every time you add a, a, a client uh, the response time is going to increase linearly with slope 1 by w right. So, if you plot r versus m uh, initially at m equal to 1 this value is going to be what we know that this is going to be tau right. And uh, initially it will increase uh, in whatever way, but we know that the uh, high load asymptote is linear and this slope is basically tau ok. And turns out that the middle part looks something like this and this is the high load asymptote and this is the low load asymptote. Okay, so, uh, response time in, uh, in a closed system has a very interesting uh, behavior this part is linear and that makes some calculations uh, very interesting. Um, then um, of course, uh, we can also write uh, once we have throughput we can write uh, yeah, clearly utilization at high load is going to be 1 there is nothing much to think there. What about n? and q and so on they are just from Little's law we can write n as um, throughput multiplied by r which is going to be mu multiplied by m by mu minus h which is equal to um, m minus mu h right. So, this is something we can write uh, the n with. And uh, similarly, if you want to find W, W is going to be that is the waiting time that is going to be R minus tau and uh, we can do the calculation for Q in a similar way lambda multiplied by R minus tau which is uh, We had this lambda r here as m minus mu h and capital lambda tau of course, this is uh, going to be equal to mu tau which is just going to be equal to 1 right. So, this is how we uh, go about the, the whole calculation we started with the basic uh, m is equal to capital lambda r plus h the little flaw region uh, the basic uh, point from where we start is we know that uh, throughput is going to go to uh, converge to mu when m tends to infinity that gave us r. Uh, from r we got n then we from again throughput we get uh, we get uh, waiting time by Little's law or by taking r minus uh, service time basically and then we get q uh, by Little's law ok. So, um, this is all the same calculations we did earlier just symbolically. Um, so, we will just uh, show that um, yeah. So, here we have the uh, whatever I wrote earlier 1 over h plus tau tau divided by h plus tau 0 waiting time response time equal to service time n is equal to tau divided by h plus tau this is for the low load asymptote and uh, the high load asymptote we did all these calculations. Uh, where we had uh, throughput is equal to 1 by tau which is equal to mu CP utilization as 1 uh, waiting time was uh, m tau minus uh, h minus tau. Uh, then we have uh, 
response time was m tau minus h, q length was m minus m minus 1 tau minus h by tau and this is uh, number at the server is m minus h by tau. Um, at the uh, at the general uh, uh, m where the it is either uh, you cannot assume a low load or a high load, this is basically just what whatever follows from Little's law which is m m is equal to lambda r plus h right. Uh, we have uh, response time is equal to m divided by lambda minus h. Um, CPU utilization is the uh, throughput which is the throughput is equal to nothing but m divided by r plus h and you take multiply this by tau that is what you get a CPU utilization. Throughput is actually just m divided by r plus h which is just rearranged uh, by uh, expression of this Little's law. Then we have um, q length number at the server uh, is going to be uh, basically lambda r. So, we take the throughput which is m h plus r um, and just write r right uh, otherwise uh, we will just get lambda back. And uh, q length at the server is the same thing we get uh, we take the, the throughput and multiply it by the waiting time. So, one point to recognize for the general uh, the m which is neither low load nor high load uh, is uh, this non asymptotic matrix which is uh, matrix which is this column. Here you can see that the matrix are actually interrelated we do not really know um, you know if we know r then we know throughput. Um, and uh, if we know uh, throughput then we know r. So, it is we, we do not really know either one of them exactly. Okay. So, we have we need to have other methods to find it if we have measurement of r then we know we can get throughput. If we have a measurement of response time uh, sorry measurement of throughput then we can get response time and so on. So, it is useful to have these relationships, but uh, only when you are uh, looking at the asymptotes is when you get the values of these metrics in the terms of the parameters. Remember here these are all parameters m, tau, h uh, these are the parameters. Okay. So, all of these and all of these are in terms of the parameters, um, but the, uh, the non asymptotic metrics are not. Okay. So, this just summarizes uh, what we have seen so far. Uh, there is another interesting metric in terms of uh, when we are talking about closed queuing systems. Um, there is a whenever we are talking about any server system a the basic question that is in the mind of people who are designing that system is what can it support. Okay. When we are talking about the open queuing systems. Uh, that question was basically what is the maximum arrival rate supported by the system and that was nothing but C mu right. If there is the mu is the service rate per server and C is the number of server. Uh, the question to ask there was what is the capacity of the system if uh, mu was 100 uh, requests per second and C was 5 we could say that the maximum uh, this system supports is 500 requests per second. Um, so, this can of course be asked about a closed queuing system also I mean if we are considering a single server system then mu uh, is going to be what the, uh, the maximum is. But the point is that the load is not being measured in terms of an arrival rate right we are not talking about an arrival rate uh, lambda. So, uh, if you are not talking the, the, the measures of the load are not lambda they are m and h right. So, the question to ask is what is the m uh, we are not I mean the question to ask is not going to be what is the think time that this system can support that is not a very natural question. The natural question is how many users can this system support that is what is the ma m what is the maximum m this system can support. So, for this uh, there is a very uh, famous uh, uh, number called the Kleinrock uh, saturation number or Kleinrock saturation heuristic um, and that goes as follows. Okay. So, you have already seen that the uh, 
plot of r versus m for a closed queuing system is going to look like this. The minimum is tau and the high load asymptote is linear with a slope of equal to tau. Okay. Now, uh, any uh, intuitive uh, system designer who works by intuition will know that the uh, maximum number of uh, customers this system should support should be somewhere uh, whatever number that that is that basically is somewhere here. Okay. This is the number we want and this number is actually denoted by m star. Okay. We do not want to be here because when, when it is here system is 100 percent utilized we know that. We do not want to be there, we want and we do not want to be here also because this is this means system is underutilized, okay. Here it is underutilized. So, kind of a heuristic, not a very rigorous, but a heuristic uh, uh, indication is that if we are operating somewhere here, uh, we are that is that is a good place to operate at because just after that the system is reaching full capacity and we do not want to be there. So, um, the idea of the Kleinrock saturation heur heuristic is that this number is actually given by the intersection of these two lines. Now, what are these two lines? This is the low load asymptote, okay, it is just a flat line and this is the high load asymptote. So, if you just drag these two lines, the intersection point that you get is a good uh, is a good indicator of where the response time is beginning to become linear and uh, therefore you should not go there and it seems to intersect at the correct point this is also called the knee of the curve okay this is also called the knee of the curve we want to be at the knee and this intersection seems to be giving us the knee okay so we have a method so if we can find the intersection point of these two lines we have our m star Okay, so, we need to do an LHS equal to RHS, we need to find the intersection of these two lines. The first line is simply uh, uh, this, the, so the, the response time is tau at the low load asymptote okay. and we know that uh, the high load asymptote is m tau minus h. Remember this is what we had derived earlier, m tau minus h is the high load asymptote. So, we want to find the intersection where the low load asymptote and the high load asymptote are the same right. So, that we will get by this and we want to find the find it find the m. So, what is that m going to be? We will just rearrange this uh, m tau is equal to tau plus h and m is equal to 1 plus h by tau. So, this is actually the m star we want to find and so this is the equation that gives us m tau. Now again what is the story of this as I have al uh, always said before the story of any uh, um, formula should be should be thought about. Okay. So, this is basically m star is equal to 1 plus think time divided by service time. Okay. So, uh, it is very intuitive in a way uh, we can also look at it as uh, equal to 1 plus service rate or uh, divided by you can call it something like think rate. Okay. So, in a way if uh, that let us think of this uh, the think time if it was 1 second or 6 seconds and service time was 1 was uh, 100 milliseconds. Okay. So, then this should be 1 plus 6 divided by 0 0.1 and this is equal to 61. So, this system supports uh, 61 users that is how to calculate that. Um, a 6 second uh, service time corresponds to a um, let us take another example, let us uh, take uh, no 100 milliseconds service time corresponds to a 
this is actually 10 requests per second ok and uh, 6 second service time um, and 6 seconds uh, service rate is 1 request per 6 seconds that is around 0 0.16 requests per second uh, 0 0.16 some kind of a think rate. Uh, this is not really the rate at which a, 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 a user issues a request, this is the rate at which a user can issue a, a request if response time was 0. Okay. So, in a way um, you are also taking 10 which is the total rate at which uh, this server can go and dividing it by the, the rate at which each user can go if response time could be very fast, this is the maximum at which one, rate, one user can go if there was basically instantaneous response from the server, uh, the request the user would just issue requests at the rate that the user can think right. So, you can see that this is quite intuitive that uh, this is how many users 10 divided by 0 0.16 is how many users the server uh, can support uh, roughly and then there is a plus one uh, which is not explained by this reasoning, but it is in that sort of range right that uh, you have the server going at 10 requests per second, a user can go at 0 0.16 uh, requests per second. So, how many such user can the server support? It is roughly 10 divided by 0 0.16 and then we add 1. Okay. So, uh, this is one way to understand this, there is one more explanation of the Kleinox uh, saturation uh, heuristic. So, uh, that is an interesting uh, explanation. So, this is uh, to think of it from a um, server timeline angle okay, and I will tell you what that is. So, this is basically a depiction of the server timeline. What is it showing? Suppose uh, one request, one user's request comes in over here. Okay. This is a server timeline. Okay. Uh, suppose the this is our origin this is our time 0 and this time 0 is when uh, one, uh, one user's request came into the server. As soon as that one user's request came into the server, the server was busy for would be busy for an average of tau seconds right. And now we know that uh, suppose this uh, the, the user uh, gets response in this tau. Uh, seconds. Now, the user is going to be thinking for some time before the uh, user uh, issues the next request. So, suppose this was user 1, right? the user 1 issued a request, this, this, uh, suppose that user came to a empty queue uh, and the server instantly started working on the user's request took tau t seconds. Uh, to process the request and now the user is has gotten the response and the user is going to think for think time equal to equal to h right. Uh, so, we know that uh, uh, the next request from this user is not going to be coming for h more seconds. The question then is how many users can the server process in this time while the other user is busy thinking right. So, that is nothing but in this h time how many taus can we find right. So, this is going to be equal to h divided by h divided by tau right. So, uh, this is an interesting way of thinking that now that means that uh, this is request can be issued by some user 2, we can have some user 3 and so on up to some user uh, user some k and this total should be will be equal to h divided by tau plus this first user ok. So, in fact, this is what uh, 1 plus h by tau is and this is exactly what Kleinrock saturation number was. If you remember from the previous slide m star was nothing but 1 plus h by tau. So, this is uh, an interesting way of understanding why the saturation number, why the maximum number of users that the server that a single server can support turns out to be 1 plus h by tau. This is one visual for that. Um, 
So, uh, just as an example whatever example we had seen earlier we had uh, 5 millisecond service time, 1 second uh, think time and earlier we had done an example with 180 clients. So, the saturation number for this system is actually 1 plus the think time is uh, in milliseconds 1000 and divided by 5 in milliseconds. So, 201 turns out to be the maximum. So, we were the example we had taken was just a little below uh, saturation number and these were the metrics we had found for that example. So, this uh, brings us to a close of the uh, basic theory and simple examples for closed uh, queuing systems. And in the next uh, lecture, we will look at some more examples and we will go back to our case study uh, of a web server. This time we will look at uh, closed load measurements. Thank you.